All right, so everybody's free on page 28. 28, we're going to work on poetry together. Um, poetry today. So we're going to read the poem. It says, You Are Old, Father William by Lewis Carroll. Um, today we're going to, for one, we are reading a poem, but two, we're going to talk about descriptive language. Okay? So we're going to talk about imagery, descriptive language and imagery. Uh, we'll kind of talk, have y'all talked about it at all with Miss Sherry? Okay, so today will be brand new for you. Okay, so y'all haven't done much poetry with Miss Sherry either? Okay, got it. Okay, so when we're looking at a poem, before we start reading it, since we haven't done a lot of poetry, let's just talk about what is different between a poem and a regular story, a prose. How is prose and poetry different, Bryson? Prose has paragraphs Okay, so this is a stanza. Everybody, uh, mark the first one to write stanza. In a regular story, in prose, we call it paragraphs. In poetry, we call them stanzas. Okay, Hayes, how else would they be different? In prose, they don't have lines, but in poetry, they have lines. Okay, so in prose, in a story, we have sentences. But in poetry, we call it a... Line. line, okay? So one of these is called a line. line. A group of them is called a stanza. One is called a line. Gavin, do you have that on your paper? Yes, ma'am, Ruthie. Why do they have like little like after says it, and then like, um, it, they're just continuing that thought. It's just keeping that thought going. Hey, okay, how else do you think a poem is different from prose? How is poetry different from prose, Callan? Okay, they can rhyme. We're going to read and see a few different um, rhyming groups or rhyming pairs as we go. But one example here it says white and Right. right. White and right what? Wrong. 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 Yes. Yes. Um, what, what's this little, like, what's this little sign right here after it? Oh, a semicolon? Mm hmm It just means that, like, what was before it is a complete sentence, and what's after it is a complete sentence, but they're kind of putting those together. Okay. Yes, Travis. I thought that line after head, I thought when people put them lines, I thought that meant that uh, they do that because the, they couldn't finish writing the word. I thought they in a, write in the prose. word the next one. In prose, that would be, yes. Oh. yes. Uh, okay, so we talked about some of the different um, things between poetry and prose. In prose, we have paragraphs. In poetry, we call them... Stanzas. In prose, we have sentences. In poetry, we call it a line. line. And also in pro uh, poetry, a lot of times it will do what? Rhyme. Yeah. Rhyme. Have rhyming words. Okay. So we're going to start with stanza one. We're going to go through and just read this. We're going to read right now stanza one and stanza two. Okay. Now, when I look at stanza one and stanza two, I see the number five here. What does that number five mean? If there are only two stanzas, why do they have the number five? Jerry? Because it's it's the fifth line. One, two, three, four, number five. Five. So these numbers are not counting your stanzas. They're counting each individual line. Okay, that's the fifth line. So we're going to read the first two stanzas. This group here. Yes. It's going like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yes, it's going to increment to 5. Yes. All right, we're ready? Yes, ma'am. Everybody's looking at their text. Uh, read the stanza one for us, Landon. You are old, Father William, the young man said, and your hair has become very white. And yet, you're... Incessantly. Incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age it is right? Okay, so in this paragraph, I mean, it, 
not in this paragraph, this what? Stanza. Stanza. Okay, so in this stanza, I want you to tell me some descriptive words. Descriptive sounds like the word what? Describe. Describe. So everybody at the top wants to write descriptive language describes. If we're using descriptive language, then we're using language that describes something. Okay? So looking at that first stanza, what are some specific descriptive language? What's the language that this poet uses to describe Father William? What is some descriptive language that you see, um, Jerry? Okay, that's not describing him. That's describing how often he, he stands on his head. What actually describes him, the person, Father William? Mm. Okay, old. It says you are old. old. What's another descriptive word or to describe him, Nadia? Your hair has become very white. Okay, your hair has become very white. So white hair is another clue that he is old. Old, old. yes. Old people a lot of times have white hair. Yazel? Young. Okay, so Yazel says young. Does that describe Father William? No. Who is that describing? Yeah, so who, who is that describing? His son. And I don't know that it's his son. If it was his son, it probably would say son. But just who? We don't know if it's his grandson, but it's just another person. Another, another person, another character. So we have the po uh, we have Father William. And then we have the young man. Okay, so young describes someone different. So I'll put it in a different color so that we can keep those two separate. We have two characters here. One of the characters is who? Father William. Father William. Your other character is the? Somebody who's what, Stella? Young. Young. Okay, so we have an old person who's Father William, and then the young person. We're not really sure who they are. Okay. What is, what's another word, uh, some more descriptive language here? What else lets you know? Is there anything else that you think describes him? Wyatt? Um, at your age, is it right? Okay, um, at your age, is it right? What does that mean? That means... What are they trying to say when he says, at your age, is it right, Travis? He stands on his head and they're like... At your age, like, is it, are you supposed to do that? So that's another clue to help you make the imprint that he is okay. old, okay? Um, all right, so let's look at paragraph, um, I mean, not paragraph, stanza two, okay? Stanza two. Read it for us, Ruthie, all right? Look at stanza two. In my mouth, Father William. Whoa, 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 not my mouth. In my youth. Good, in my youth. In my youth, Father William replied to, to his son, I fear it might injure the brain. But now that I'm, I'm perfectly sure I have, I have none, why I do it again and again? Okay, so what is some language, descriptive language, in stanza two that describes Father William? What's some language in stanza two that describes Father William, Callan? Okay, so in my youth, if he's saying in my youth, that means he's not in his youth anymore, anymore right? When he says in my youth, he's talking about when he was young. 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 Youth means young. Okay, so if he's saying in my youth, that means he's not he's not young anymore. He's talking about in the past. Okay? Past tense. What else? Yes, the past tense. Bryson? Um, it doesn't uh, describe him, but it says far away. Hey, Father William replied to his son. So now it's told us who this young man is. It's who? Father William. 
His son. Okay, so right here I want you to write his son. So we have Father William and his son. So we have a man that's a little bit older, and he's talking to his son. Stella, do you have that? Okay, so based off of what we've seen here, or what we've read here, in Sanders 1 and Sanders 2, I want you to imagine what this looks like. Okay. What did you say, Ruthie? I said, I kind of have an idea on what Father William looks like because of the picture of him. Okay, so Stella, uh, Ruthie yeah. says that she has an idea of what Father William looks like based on the picture, right? Yes. Okay, so the, the poet has given us, the illustrator and the poet have given us a picture to help describe him. But the poet... The illustrator drew the picture. The poet has given us some words here, right? Some descriptive language. So based off of what he said here, what do you what can you imagine this looks like? What are you what do you think is happening here? If you were gonna draw a picture of it, what would you include in your picture? Travis? I would include uh Father William like sitting in a chair like sitting on a recliner or something and like his um son sitting somewhere else and them two talking to each other okay so that we know they're having a conversation the descriptive language lets us know they're having, a, they're having a conversation what else Riley? what would you add to that Okay, so the white hair, that adds to our picture. We would have white hair to, get, to make him old. Breezy? I have something totally different. Well, not totally, but I can kind of see Father William sitting in a rocking chair. Because kind of like where, how the book is and like the picture, how it's not colored. I can tell, maybe tell that it was back in the old days. And I can okay. see him sitting in a rocking chair, like on the porch and his son sitting on the steps and he's Okay, maybe so. Good. So that's imagery. Um, Wyatt? I would um, picture him, you know, being kind of fat, um, white, white-haired and bald. Okay. On the top. On the top. Why do you think bald? Did it say bald? Mm-hmm. Where? Oh, wait. But it's, um, I'm, okay, so it doesn't say bald. So why did you, why do you think bald? Because um, I see it in the picture. I'm being bought on the top. Okay, you see it in the picture, but give me some more. What do you know about Father William? What do you know about Father William? Yazel? He's old. He's old. What do you know about a lot of old men? They're, They're lazy. lazy. Hair on top. They don't have a lot. <laughs> okay, we're talking about their hair still. I want some. Um, their hair on top. A lot of them are balding, right? They don't have hair on top. So maybe the hair that he does have is what color? Gray. gray. White, gray, 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 white, right? But on top, he may be bald because a lot of old men lose their hair on top first, right? So I don't think that's wrong. You're using what you know about older people and what the poet has said, some descriptive language there. Okay, okay last one, Pius. This actually just reminds me of my granddaddy because he doesn't even have any hair, but it's short. Okay. But luckily it looks like him. Okay, so, so Kaya says it reminds me of someone that he knows. Okay, a lot of times when you read, you use your real life experiences. That's He's making a connection to this. You remember earlier in the week we talked about making connections? He's using what he knows about real life, so when he really knows to help him figure out what this text is talking about. Okay, so here we have some descriptive language. We circled it, and it has helped us create a picture in our head. When we create a picture in our head, we can think about, we can really see kind of what's happening. You guys told me what you think a picture of this would look like. That's called imagery. Everyone write imagery out to the side. It's when you can, like, imagine it, and you can create a picture. They've given you enough details. They've described it enough. You can kind of create your own picture. Okay.
Okay, when I look here and it says that he's old and he has white hair, do you think that that is figurative language or literal language? Literal. What, Landon? Literal. Literal. This is literal because it is no, it's it's true. Really. You can really see it. They're not talking about something that's figurative. It's not really there. They're just, it's literal. You can see the white hair. It's literally there. Okay? So I'll decide this on track. Literal language. Yes. Um, you're saying like he's bald up here, and then he just has hair like this. Mm -hmm. Yes, Bryson. Um, I picture him being like a mad scientist. Mm. <laughs> I mean, okay. He has space. His eyes look like this. All right, let's move on. We have one line left at the bottom that we haven't read. Are we ready? Can I read it? Back, back, back in star. Back, 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 back in star. Okay, we're starting at the line at the bottom, and we're moving on to stanza three. So we're just reading stanza three, okay? Read stanza three for us, Wyatt. Everybody's following along. You're old, said the youth, as I mentioned before, and have grown most uncommonly fat. Yet you turned a back somersault in at the door. Pray, what is the reason of that? Okay, so what is your descriptive language in stanza three? What have they told you? It's the descriptive language that they've given you to describe the character. How does the poet describe the character? Um, Yatzel? He's fat. He's fat. It says uncommonly fat. So is he just kind of fat? No. No, no. he's like big, 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 right? Okay, class, class. Yes, yes. Now, there is something here that the young youth, the son, was saying that he does a lot. What does the older man do a lot of? Stand on his head, right? Now, in stanza three, we learn something else that he does. What else does he do? Raise your hand. Don't yell out. What else does he do, Landon? Back somersaults. Back somersaults. Okay, in your head, imagine an old man. Chubby, <laughs> not really chubby, but really fat, like big, right? He took his chair. Like five class, class. class. Yes, yes. And he's doing what? A somersault. What is a somersault? <laughs> oh, I know. What the girl did. Okay, we have a lot of talking class, class. Yes, yes. I'm just gonna wait on you. We're all facing the front. This is a funny poem, but remember, we are in class and we're ready to learn. We can have fun, but we got to know when to cut it off. Okay, so you've got this old, really fat man. He's doing a somersault. What is a somersault, Jerry? It's the thing that rocks back and forth. Not quite. Here. Not quite. Stella? Um, a somersault is where you technically go in a back bend and you go back and then like flip. Okay, so it's a type of flip. flip. It's a type of flip. Yeah. No, we're not going to do Come on. Okay, so it's a type of flip. Imagine this really old man. Class five. Yes. yes. Imagine we're using what? Imagine. Imagery. What is it? Say it again. What is it? Imagery. Okay, we're using imagery. We're imagining. This old man who's really big, really fat, doing a hand, he's standing on his head, doing a handstand, handstand, and then he's doing somersaults. He's doing flips. Can you imagine in your head when you see that? Yes. Now, do you yep. think, class, class, yes, yes, do you think that's literal? No, no, no. it's not. Yes. I don't know. It's saying in here, it's saying in this poem. How could you do it? Okay, I'm just going to wait. It's saying in this poem that he's really doing these things, right? Right. Because the poet is trying to help you create a imagery. An image. And they're using imagery. All right, let's look at stanza four. Read stanza four um, for us, Landon. Have you already read London? Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, let's let's let someone who has it. Kaya's right says a four. In my young he said the same as he should. Um, his gray locks. I kept all my limbs very supple by the use of my this this, this, this ointment. ointment. Mm -hmm. One shilling the box allow me to sell you a couple. Okay, right, so what here in stanza four would be your descriptive language? What has the poet used to describe Father William? Gavin, what do you think he's used to describe Father William? Um, um, that he shook his gray locks. Gray locks. That's another descriptive word to tell you what he does. does. Looks like. Looks like. Gray locks. When it says locks, what is it talking about? When it says gray locks, what is it talking about, Nadia? His hair. Yeah, so when it says locks, what is it talking about? His hair. His hair. So he's shaking his gray hair. hair. Okay? Yes, Hayes? In the stanza one, it says your hair is different from gray. Why? Why? But in this one, it says gray. Okay, so in stanza of one, it says it's become very white, and here it says gray. Why do you think it's saying gray and white? Why do you think the poet would use both of them? Why would the poet use gray and white? Stella, please pay attention. Callan, what do you think? I think when people get really old, their hair becomes gray and white. Okay, because when you're really old, it becomes a little gray and white. What does that mean, gray and white? Add on to that, Alyssa. Okay, it's kind of mixed. What do you think, um, Travis? I think it means uh, that he's it's kind of describing him again. It's telling us that he's really old and that um, the only hair that he has left is um, gray and white. He don't have any other color hair. Okay, William? I was like really thinking that his natural hair color was probably white and it was probably gray. Color. Mm, okay. Think about when you get old, your hair turns what color? Gray. Gray. Now, do you think anybody's hair just automatically goes to white? No. No, it gets gray and then a little bit. Less gray, a little bit less gray, and eventually it turns it to white. white, right? So it's showing that he's. He is, if it's gone from gray to now very white, is he like just kind of old? No. 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 This is a man who's been turning gray. No. Now it's it's been gray for so long it's white. He's pretty old, oh. oh, right? Yeah. Okay, class, class. Yes, yes. yes. Jerry? I got another one. Tell me. He's old. 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 Okay, he uses, it says he used ointment. That ointment, it says, in my youth, I kept all of my limbs very supple. Supple means flexible, okay? So when it talks about doing a somersault, you would have to be what? Flexible. Flexible, yes. So he uses ointment. What do you think that ointment? What is an ointment? It's a med. What is an ointment? Yeah, Is it a medicine? Okay, it's a medicine. Yes, tell me a little bit more how you add on to that. Yeah, it's like a cream that goes. Yeah, it's like a cream that has medicine in it. So he would rub this ointment on his limbs, and it's made them more what? Flexible. Flexible, which he says is why he can still do what? Yes. Somersaults. Yeah, somersaults. All right, let's read. We're in stanza five and six. Read five for us, um, Hayes. Gavin, hey teacher, please stand to five. You are old, said the youth, and your jaws are too weak to for anything covering the suit. Yet you finish the goose with bones in the beak. Pray, how did you manage to do it? Hey, so what are some descriptive words in this stanza? What are some descriptive words that you see in this stanza? Alyssa? Okay, 
day old? No. Which, is that a new description? No. No, but it is still a description. Okay, what's another descriptive word that you see, Briley? His jaw is too weak. Okay, your jaws are too weak. Now, he says his jaws are weak. Why do you think he would say that? What does that describe to us? What is the poet trying to tell you? When he says his jaws are too weak, what is the poet trying to tell you as the reader? Hayes? Hey, oh, he's, he's very old. He might have dentures. Hey, a lot of old people have dentures. What are dentures? Those are like things. Like Stella. Like Stella. <laughs> hey, Stella, tell me. There's those little thingy magics that you put in your mouth and it looks like you have real teeth. Okay, so they're teeth that you put in your mouth. They're fake teeth, right? Yes. That you put in your mouth. Because a lot of old people, their jaws are so weak, weak that their teeth actually fall out. out, right? Okay, so he's saying your jaws are so weak that you can't eat anything tougher than soot. Soot's like a... Y'all should have heard about soot when you read your... Um, first. So who can tell you what soot is based on the story that you wrote, Miss Cherry? What do you think, Bryson? Okay, it's like chewy. Now for birds, a lot of times it's from the ocean. Do you think his is going to be from the ocean? No. No, no. but it's going to have that same texture. It's going to be really what? Soft. Soft, Soft and chewy. chewy, mushy, okay? So he's saying your jaws are so weak. Back, back, back in star. Back, 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 back in star. He's saying your jaws are so weak. But all you can eat is this soft, mushy food, right? Mm -hmm. But you finish the goose with the bones and the feet. So he's saying, you're so old, you shouldn't be able to do this. Your jaw should be too weak. But, but what? He can. He shouldn't be able to, but he can. Should this old man be able to do a handstand? No. But he can. Should he be able to do a somersault? No. But he can. So the young man is kind of like, Dad, you're so old. How are you doing this? Right? That's what he keeps asking him over and over. How are you doing the handstand? How are you doing the somersault? How are you eating the goose? Right? All right, let's read the next um, Next stands. Uh, read for us, Bryson. Old, so whoa, whoa, whoa. The one that in my youth. In my youth, said the first father, I said to the law and argued each chance with the arm. And the muscular strength which he gave to my jaw has lasted the rest of my Okay, now what in that stanza would be descriptive language? What is descriptive language there, Wyatt? Uh, I argued each case with my wife. Yeah. Argued each case with my wife. What does that mean? Or, or what does that mean? I'm in jail. Whoa. <laughs> what do you think that means? Argue each case with my wife. Alyssa, I need you to pay attention. Gavin, I need you to pay attention. What does that mean? He's argued each case with his wife. Remember, we were talking about... His jaw is being too weak, right? Right. So think about your mouth. That's what we're talking about, right? Right. So make an inference. When it says, when he's saying, your jaws are too weak, how did you eat that goose? And he says, well, in my youth, I took to the law. I argued each case with my wife. What is he saying when he says, argued each case with my wife? What is he trying to tell him? What is he trying to tell his son, Alyssa? Um, I think he's trying to tell his son that he that he's taken good care of his teeth. No. Okay, think about this, Alyssa. Argued each case with my wife. Pick out which words you know there. Which words do you know, Alyssa? Case and what? Life. Not life. What's the word? Did you say wife? Oh, sorry, I thought you said my life. Okay, case and wife, right? Okay, so wife is a what? Your spouse. Your spouse, so it's going to be an actual? 
person. person. Okay, so we're talking about a person here. Now it says case. What would be a case? What do you think a case would be? What's it when he says are you each case? What do you think, Bryson? It means you went to court and argued against people. I don't know about that. Yeah. That's what they're that's right, this is some different language. We're gonna talk about it. Bryson says case means to go to court. How many of you thought that? Okay, you take your case before the judge. Sometimes that is what we mean when we say case. But here, do you think he's going to take his wife to court all the time? No. 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 What does this mean when it says case? What does that mean, Hayes? Okay, little stuff's a little what? Little problems. He's talking about, I argued about each. Food. Class, class? Yes, yes. Okay, hey, I just told you the answer. Y'all getting caught up on something somebody shouted out. That's why I want to talk when we raise our hands. Or use our nonverbals. Okay, when it says case, it's talking about the what? The problem. The problem, okay? So he argued every problem. Problem. If you argue about every single problem, what's that going to do to your jaws? It's going to hurt them. What's it going to do to your jaws? Go back to the stanza. What does he say that it's done? If he argues about every single problem with his life, what has that done for him? Landon, are you looking at your stanza? He gives you some clues. Nadia? He gave his jaws. He gave his jaw strength. Okay, so look, when you argue, you are you're talking, right? Over and over and over. You're arguing back and forth, back and forth. What are your jaws doing? They're moving. They're getting some what? Exercise. So he exercise. So he said that's made his jaws really strong. So he's saying I was able to eat that goose with the bones and the beak because. Way back in my youth, I used to do what? Argue. Argue, Argue with his wife. That's not good, is it? No. But he's saying yes. that it has made his jaws very strong. strong. Now, class, class. Yes, yes. Some of you said that when it says I took to the law and I argued each case with my wife. That it made you think about the court system, right? Yeah. Going to court. Being a lawyer. He, thinking about a lawyer. That's an um, example of figurative language. He's not really talking about the law. He's just using it, and he's not really talking about cases with the judge or taking cases with a lawyer. He's just talking about every single problem. So this is an example of what? Figurative language. Figurative language. He doesn't mean that he really took his wife to court all the time. He's just saying he argued about every single problem with her. Yes. Um, it made me think that he was a lawyer and that um he was arguing with his wife about the cases he um was talking about in the court place. Okay. I don't really think that's the direction that they're going. I understand why, because those few words, you just kind of put that together with what you already know about life. But I don't think that's really the direction the poet was going. So if we wanted literal language, if we wanted to know exactly what he meant, then he should have said, I argued about each problem with my wife. But instead, he used figurative language. All right, class, class. Yes, yes. Yes, class. Um, when that exercises your jaw when you talk a lot, does that mean my jaws are strong? I would say so. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Last two stanzas. You are going to read. Listen to your job. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. By yourself, we have worked on descriptive language together. You're going to work on descriptive language by yourself. You're going to read the last two stanzas. What are you going to read? 
And your job is to, one, circle your descriptive language, like we did. Two, I want you to tell me how the poet feels about Father William. So based off of what you read, I'm going to write the question here, and you write your answer. This is the question you're answering. How does the poet feel about who? Father William. So you're reading those last two stanzas by yourself. You underline your what? Check. No. What are you underlining? Class, class. Yes, yes. A lot of you are reading, and I'm still giving directions. Eyes up here. Eyes up here. Your first job, you're reading the two stanzas, right? Your second job, you underline the what? Descriptive language. Descriptive language. What describes him? Number three, you write at least one sentence, one complete sentence, that tells me how the poet feels about Father, Father William. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Any questions? No. All right, get started. If you need help, let me know.